Hey, I'm Randy, and I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't feel like audio equipment should cost more than putting a deck, hiring someone to build a deck on the back of your house that your family can enjoy for decades. And if you seal it properly, maybe even longer. So today we're talking about the Sony two-channel receiver. It is the uh, STR DH-190. I know, a lot of people have talked about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to show you how you can use it better. Maybe. I don't know. So grab a cup of coffee or whatever you want to drink in a cup or can out of the bottle. Let's talk about the Sony. What is this? STR DH-190. My beverage was bubbling. I don't know if you can hear that. It's making a lot of noise earlier. Really. That's how you know it's a good beverage when it makes noise at you. Uh, we have a new sponsor. Xander's Organic Deodorant. When you want to feel better about your impact on the environment and don't care that you still reek of body odor and bacteria that's growing in the warm, dark, crease of your underarm think about getting some Xanders it supports two hippies that two transient hippies that live in a VW bus roam around the Northwest it really doesn't work at all it's just like putting something in your armpit and then you still walk around smelling yourself all day anyway they're a sponsor I can't really get get on them too much they don't have TV or internet, so they're probably not going to see this anyway. All right, Sony. It's a two-channel receiver. What does that mean? It has an FM tuner. Yeah, FM tuner. Also has a phono stage, okay? I think it has uh, four inputs and Bluetooth, okay? It works. It's rated at 100 watts times two, all right? I don't know, maybe, maybe. Does it really matter though? Because in all actuality, you probably need a max of 20 watts that doesn't distort and you'll be fine. You'll drive just about anything, even hard to drive speakers, I doubt hit 20 watts. If you don't believe me, go watch the British audio file. He talks all about it. I reached out to him, he still hasn't subscribed. Come on, British audio file. Give me some love. His name's Turnin? Taryn. Taryn. Sounds like a bird of prey. Taryn. Okay. So, I got this in. Other people have talked about it. So, I figured what the heck. I found it at Best Buy. It kind of goes in and out of stock because it's a popular item. I found it at a Best Buy. Open box. And it's going back because it's actually beat up pretty good. Pretty well. So I'm like, okay, let's see what you can do. Little Sony inexpensive receiver. And I hooked up the ELAC Unify UB5s, a notoriously hard to drive speaker. It's got low sensitivity, four ohm speaker, dips below four ohms. It's a beast. It's a beast to drive. It worked. It didn't work great or well, or as, as I've heard, but that is, Comparing it to the Anthem Integrated 225, which puts out like 300 watts at 4 ohms. It wasn't as good as that. But that, in its day, was also a $2,000 integrated amplifier. The point is, I went ahead and just threw the toughest thing that I have in the curated collection of cheap audio man speakers. And it drove them. The volume range goes from 0 up to 75. At 65, these started to distort pretty badly with the Elax, okay? Just with the Elax. And I think it's just because it can't handle the, the current, okay? Most speakers, though, 6-ohm speakers, it's going to do fine. So I tried the Elac Unifies with it. I, I tried the uh, Klipsch RB612. I just did a review about that. Um, did wonderfully on that. Those are high-efficiency speakers. I paired it up with the Sony SSCS5, keeping it in the family. Did great with those. 
Also the uh, Pioneer, the Andrew Jones ones, the first ones. I think it's something 22. They great on those two. So how does it sound? Um, this sounded eerily similar to the Denon PMA 600NE. Uh, it had a real nice uh, full low end and nice mid range. Let's do, let's see how internally braced this is. Oh yeah, braced really well. Anyway, it did, a, it sounds good. It's not the last word in resolution. Of course it's not, it's a hundred dollars, but it sounds great for what it is. And frankly, it didn't sound very different from the uh, Denon PMA 600 NE. Okay, I think the Denon can handle uh, I think it has more current, so it can handle much harder to drive speakers. But from a sound signature, this sounded similar. Okay, I also compared this to the Fozzy Audio. It's a little Class D uh, Chinese amplifier. But it, that Fozzy has like one set of RCAs. This one, not quite as detailed. But you're splitting hairs. I mean... It still sounded good. It's the Class D sounded a little bit more detailed. And Class Ds in general, sometimes in general, maybe, I don't know, broad, broad strokes here. Class Ds, sometimes a little bit lively on the top end. However, the Fozzy is actually pretty good on, on the low end too. Anyway, it's good. The phono stage. I mated it up with a Fluence RT83. I listened to um, Marilyn Manson, Pale Emperor. Great record. Fantastic record. One of the songs, Killing uh, Strangers, used in the John Wick movie. It's a good song. You know, Marilyn's gotten, like, if you listen to his stuff, like, early on, his music has matured as he has. He's got some good music. I just, if you haven't listened to him lately, give that give that record a listen. Pale Emperor, and then he's got a new record out where he's wearing a cowboy hat. So, that record sounded great. The phono amp is really good for the price. I didn't, I did not compare this to Emo, Emotiva TA100. I didn't think that I'm not going to compare something and say, oh, this is this is as good. I knew it wasn't going to be as good, and I listened to that the um, Emotiva. That's basically my reference amp. I didn't compare them. Um, because if I did, I would probably really pick this thing apart. I approached this and I compared it to something similar, but I approached this as to, am I enjoying the music with this $100 to $130 receiver? Am I enjoying it? The answer is yes, I did enjoy it. Um, I thought the uh, phono amp was great. I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Okay? Didn't feel like I was missing anything. Um, it also, like on some integrateds, the phono amp, it doesn't do a great job. Uh, well, it doesn't amplify the signal, incoming signal, as much as some others. This one sounded very similar. Like if you switch inputs on this, it all sounded about the same level. I like that. Um, dun, dun, dun. Let's talk about the remote. The remote on this is awesome. One of the biggest reasons why it's awesome is because Sony doesn't hate you. They give you regular batteries in here, not the flat ones that you can never find. And when you go to the store to buy them, you don't get the right ones. This has batteries that you could find under your couch or probably your car seat. Just dig around. You're going to find some if this goes dead. Okay, the remote is incredibly intuitive. Okay, it's not like a remote they just grabbed that they have on a hundred other things and just made it work to turn it on and off. No, this remote specifically designed for this device. Great tone controls, very easily accessible on the remote. Sitting back, not enough sparkle on the top end, they got you covered. Hit the treble plus. Too much bass or not enough bass? Hit the bass plus. It's got one button for input one, two, three, four. Um, it's even got a portable in, which I guess is probably on the front. I didn't even notice that. Yep, portable in, 
jack here so if you want to stick your device into that you certainly can a uh, phono FM uh, and then Bluetooth Bluetooth sounds good it's very heavy on this side not so much on this side it was actually heavier than I thought it would be big old capacitors in there okay Bluetooth sounded good okay do 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 talked about the remote Bluetooth sounds good easy tone controls uh, decent power uh, good sounding phone app. talked about all that oh knobs are cheap feeling is it really surprising the one weird thing is I was testing two different DACs on this so I was comparing the this Prozor which I did a video on little $15 DAC I was comparing that to the Topping D50S, which is a $250 DAC. So what I did is I had them on two different inputs, and uh, then I would switch on the computer, the source, and then switch the input real quick, going back and forth. And then I would slowly turn the knob. The weird thing about this knob is if you turn it super slowly, it doesn't actually change the volume. You have to, be, you have to get into it a little bit very plasticky and just kind of odd it just kind of spin if you do it really slowly it spins does that matter no don't do it that way just it's just it's it feels cheap because it is cheap that mean it doesn't sound good it just means it's got a cheap knob now if that's all i have to complain about this unit then it's a w it's a w for the sony Okay, so what are you getting with this that you wouldn't get with like the Fozzy Audio, which is around $80? Okay, so for $20 more, you're getting, in my opinion, better Bluetooth. Okay, because it's actually balanced with this. So while the Fozzy maybe have a better Bluetooth codec, uh, maybe Bluetooth 5.0 or whatever it is, to me, this one sounded better and was easier to attach your device to. You're getting uh, Bluetooth plus four inputs plus a phono input, okay? So you can grow with this. I mean, it, let's say you only have this in your phone and a set of speakers, you're good, Bluetooth. Let's say you have a TV, get yourself a $15 Prozor DAC, run the optical out of your TV or digital coaxial, run it into here, run an RCA in. Okay, now you got two. You got your TV, whatever streaming device, or if it's a smart TV, then you have all those different apps at your fingertips, and you have Bluetooth. You go out and you buy a record player, turntable, that doesn't have a phono amp in it, it's got you covered. You just hook it up. So, if you're starting out, you can get this, a set of speakers, you're good. Starting out, you can get this, a set of speakers, and the Prozor. Now you've added then you can add a turntable later. Got an old CD player? Plug it in. I would recommend if it's got a digital out, plugging it into this and then into this. So what this is, is for 15 extra dollars, now you have a DAC and two more different inputs, coaxial and digital. So if this is $100, $115, and then you grab a pair of the very awesome Sony SSCS5s for $75 or $73. So we have 100, 115. Let's just round up and say that the uh, Sony's are 75. I'm trying to do math. 115 plus 75, 70 would be 185, $190. $190 gives you a, I can use this right now by using my phone, hook it up, hook my TV up to it, have all those apps available, run Amazon Music through it, run Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, whatever. Doesn't have MQA, so forget the masters. But if you have Tidal, MQA, you're probably not looking at this product, to be fair. Okay, so this is a great product because you can buy it and you can add on to it. You can get this deck initially, and when that you want to try something new, get the topping D50S. 
which is a $250 DAC. Very good chipset. Has an LDAC Bluetooth. Sounds great. Has a bunch of different color modes. One of, my point is you can grow with this. Get, your pair, get yourself a pair of Sony SSCS5 speakers for $75. Maybe eventually look at, I don't know, decent set of Klipsch or Elax or Warfordales. It's going to be fine. It's going to be good, and you're going to enjoy your music. $200. Less than $200. That astounds me. You couldn't do that when I was a kid. Then this stuff doesn't sound as good. All right, if you want to look at the back, this thing is so awkward with the weight. The weight is distributed. It's got your um, clippy clip connections. Not my favorite, but also, come on, let's be reasonable. At this price range, this is what you're going to get. Why is this not my favorite? Because it makes it very hard to AB different speakers on something like this or AB uh, the phono amp or something like that. It's fine. Tone controls work really well. I don't know what frequency they're at. Oh, this also has a pure direct mode. Ugh. Pure direct mode is going to shut down parts of the amplifier so that you can, in theory, get something better sounding. I tried it. It works. Did I notice a significant difference in the sound quality? Not really. But it does have it and it does work. So, for what that's worth. If you're getting back into hi-fi, if you want to put something in your garage, if you want to put something in your office, hard look. Hard look at this. And if you want to add a sub, it doesn't have a sub out, but don't worry. The Sony Core Series subwoofer has a high-level speaker inputs. Doesn't matter. Run the speaker out of this into your sub, then run the speaker wire out of the sub into your speakers, and now you have a subwoofer. So now you're at $200 for all this. Get yourself an old crappy, <laughs> how ironic. This is even a Sony. It's a $20 DVD player. Digital out of that into here, here, into there. So now let's say that's a $210 CD player. Go on eBay, get a bunch of old CDs for two bucks a piece, um, and then add the Sony sub. We're keeping it all in the family today. Why? Because it's, it's all decent stuff except for this. Um, Three hundred twenty bucks. You got a sub. You got speakers. You got a CD player. You have your digital sources, Bluetooth. Forget about it. This is a great little product. It really is. If you don't turn the knob. Just use the remote to turn up. The knob works, okay? Now, I was, so this is a $10 USB deck. Uh, it sounds like a $5 USB deck. I had high hopes for it because this one sounded really good. That one, not so much. But if your computer doesn't have an optical out, you can always get this uh, for 10 bucks and it will make sound. I don't think it's very good sound. So, all right, not too long. With that, I'm Randy. I'm the Jeep Audio Man. If you want to listen to the songs that I use to test fundamentally my speakers, but also electronics, you can check out my test tracks. It's on Amazon Music. And if you want to try Amazon Music HD for free, there's a link in the description. Click on it. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. Click Try HD. I think it's still three months for free. If you try it, free trial, I get a little dollar, a couple dollars, dollar-ish. And then you can cancel whenever you want to. 30 days, 60 days, 89 days, if you're feeling particularly adventurous. So, great product. It does sound good. Pretty much matches up with what everybody else has said. But for a minimal investment, Sony SSCS5s, the Pioneers, the Andrew Jones originals, 75 bucks, $200 all in, 300 bucks if you want to sub. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. It gets you back in the game, back in the hi fi game. 
So with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.